let's go back in time. It was 6.30 in the evening, New Year's Day 1964, when the whole of the nation huddled around their little black and white TV sets to watch a brand new pop show coming live from a converted church in Manchester. Now, it was planned to run for just six weeks. Centre has been home to Top of the Pop since the mid-60s and countless mega stars, one-hit wonders, dancers, DJs have packed this studio for the half an hour of excitement, music and lights that is Top of the Pop. Let's take a quick tour. Lighting gallery. Production gallery. Sound gallery. Dressing room. Makeup. Wardrobe. Tea bar. You're getting quite an old hand at, at Top of the Pop, Thank aren't you? Yes. <laughs> How many times have you been on the show? I'm trying to add them up. I think this is my 16th time now. And uh, is there anyone that's more memorable than the others? The very first one, obviously, was amazing. It was fantastically exciting. We nearly missed it, actually, because we were in Belgium and they had, to, they had to come and grab our car that was going to on to tour and say, no, don't go to the next gig, get on the plane and go to do Top of the Pops instead. OK, Abe, you're the drummer with OMD today, mm. but uh, you're actually known as a drummer for much more famous things than that. Yeah, I must admit, I did uh, the wetter the better for the 815. <laughs> I did all the drumming on that. Tim, what are your first memories of Top of the Pops? I can't remember. <laughs> but my first memory of the Top of the Pops was... Um, I must be about four, and uh, the Beatles were on, and one sister said, that's my band, and then the Rolling Stones came on, and the other sister said, that's my band, and I think my granny turned the telly off and said, you're not to watch that band. Fox uses up to eight cameras. We've just seen three of the cranes whizzing around. Let's have a chat to one of the cameramen. Peter Goldring, come on down. Peter, how long have you been doing Top of the Pop for? Well, I came to the BBC straight from school in the early 60s, and I've been doing it ever since then. Yeah, when when it came down from Manchester in, when at 65, 6, must have done hundreds of them. So does any one band stand out in your mind? Um, I suppose all the, the, the famous bands like the Beatles and the Stones. How has it changed since the 60s? Well, the cameras are much more mobile than they ever were. We never had, uh, we've got these handheld cameras now that whiz around. We've got three of those, and we've got three big ones on cranes. In those days, we had sort of studio cameras that were on pedestals, and we've got this fantastic light rig now that we've got. In 1964, it was the Beatles in black and white. And now, in 1991, it's black box in colour on BBC One and in stereo on Radio One. You took over producing Top of the Pops in the early 80s. What changes did you make? Well, the first thing I did actually was to get rid of pants people and the dancers. Um, when I came in, I thought, well, um, you know, it's all getting a bit sexist now, and it really w didn't suit the time. Uh, and so I got rid of them and put in what we call cheerleaders, which is, you know, the, 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 to generate a little more atmosphere in the studio with the audience. And that's, that was the, the big change I made. Of course, the other thing is the music, isn't it? I mean, mm. music changes like every week. There's only two things, have you ever realised, only two things that change really quickly, and that's the news and Top of the Pops. Yeah. It dates. And I believe this is your first for a few years. Uh, it's the first for four years, actually. Um, yes, um, the producer, Paul Ciani, at the moment, unfortunately, is in hospital, and they asked me to just pop in and do it. And I haven't done it for four years. And the strange thing is that we've got OMD, we've got Andy on the show tonight, and he said to me today, do you know, I haven't done the show for four years either. Well, I'm sure it'll be a great one. Have a good night. Thanks very much indeed. <laughs> Uh, how long have you been presenting Top of the Pops? Um, just coming up for two years now. I, virtu I did it virtually straight away when I started at Radio 1. How do you get to become a Top of the Pops presenter? Um, you don't really have a, have a say in it. Um, you get picked by the producer. If he likes the sound of you on radio, he just invites you to come up. And I do it now about every five weeks. 
Oh, yes, I've got to ask you, why do the presenters shout so much? <laughs> I think some shout more than others. Um, but actually, what happens is, what, I mean, you've seen some of the rehearsals so far. I know you're going to see the real thing in a minute. And it's very, very quiet in the rehearsal. But when they heard all the audience in and they turned the volume up on the speakers, you can't hear a word. So you literally can't hear yourself. So you're going, oh, no! <laughs> and everyone else seems to be shouting, but you, you can't even hear yourself. Of course, we are live in stereo on Radio 1 FM. We've got a right good rollicking show for you tonight. It's a pleasure Hello, to be here. Hello, Pinky. Hello. One very important question. How do you get tickets to be in the audience at the top of the top? Oh, you, um, you write to the BBC. Simple as that. And I'm going to ask myself one last question. Do I want to be a pop star and appear on top of the pop? No. I think I'll fix presenting. <laughs> <laughs>